Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. Hurt. <laughs> Damn. Here we go. Fucking win. Ow. Woo wee. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, who still got jet lag. He's thinking that it is like six o'clock in the morning. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I got to make sure I let you know Joe Bear is in the house as well. Let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. You know, I have to say, I am truly blessed, okay? I'm not I'm not a rich man. I don't have all the things that I would like, but you know what? I appreciate the things that I have and to be able to wake up every morning and be able to talk to you guys is incredible for me. So, I appreciate all of you guys for here, all the support that you guys give. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because like today, today we've got the Dan Salio show. And we'll be talking about practice. Uh, Cowboys, of course, versus Eagles. Dan Salio, who didn't make it to training camp in Oxnard, nor did Philly 500. I was there. I traveled to 3,000 miles to be there. Those two guys in California couldn't quite find the time to make it there. So I will say that uh, if you're going to walk the walk, then you better be prepared to talk the talk. So be that as it may be that as it may, the Dallas Cowboys who practiced yesterday in, in helmets and um, shorts today will be practicing against the Rams. I don't know if all y'all know that. I've been talking about it for a couple of days now. Now, see, the, the Rams were supposed to be practicing against the Chargers, but it turns out it's, uh, it's a little more advantageous to practice against the Cowboys. You say, huh? Why? Because traffic we sitting here talking about traffic. So here's the thing. The the Raiders, excuse me, the Chargers practice in Woodland Hills. Okay? Woodland Hills. It's actually warmer in Woodland Hills and stuff. The uh, Rams are actually practicing at um, Thousand Oaks because their temporary facility is not ready. So Thousand Oaks is only about 22 miles away from Oxnard. So they're actually close by. So they're basically saying, you know what? We we're practicing against the Chargers one uh, two times. We'll take one of those and we'll practice with the Cowboys in Oxnard because that's actually closer. And it may be here. Here's the thing: we got to sit here and think about this, though. It may be that Sean McVay, you know, the the evil genius that he is. It's hard to believe that the commanders had that guy, had that guy as an assistant, as well as uh, uh, Mike w uh, Williams uh, in Miami, as well as uh, Shanahan. Can you believe the commanders literally had all three of those guys there coaching for their team and they all let them get away? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Be that as it may, the evil genius that is Sean McVay may like practicing against the Cowboys because they're in the same conference and trying to get a little extra inside intel on the team and the players. Just in case, just in case, we got to face you later. It's a possibility, guys. Don't put anything past anybody for trying to find the minute detail that might lead to a win. Be that as it may, I love it because I look at this and say, Practicing against teams is going to be the way of the future. Think about it. Think about this thing, okay? And the Rams are taking full advantage of this. The Rams have one of these practices scheduled every week, at least. Think about playing against people that you're not practicing against every day. If you're practicing against guys, you know, you, you, you kind of talk to each other and say, hey, man, make it, don't, 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 hey, take it easy on this play, man. Take it easy on someone. Make me look good, and, and I'll, I'll make you look good. Because you're leaning against each other and stuff. You know the tendencies. You know what they're going to do. You get an opportunity now because now you got the number ones going against the number ones, and you ain't friends. You're heated. Discuss, you know, you're, you're heated out there. You're trying to play. You're trying to do some work and everything else. You're going to go ahead and get into a couple fights unless you're a New England Patriot. 
Jared Mayo has let his players know. Has let his players know. This, this is how you know there's a new sheriff in town. Has let his players know if you get into a fight, you're in two categories, okay? Category one, you're a veteran and you fight. Guess what happens? You're going to play the whole preseason game. You're going to play all four quarters. Damn. You mean I got to be out there risking my ass? And I got to do, I got to put in more work. If you are not a starter, if you are not a starter and you fight in practice, you ain't playing in the preseason game. And if you are a guy who is trying to become a starter or trying to get a roster spot, that preseason game is everything. It is everything. So I don't think we're going to see any fights started by the New England Patriots. Now, you, you might see the, the, you know, you, you might see the Eagles, you know, start some fights or something like that, but that's the way you lay down the law. That's when you know that you are in charge, Mike McCarthy. So today we'll be practicing against the Rams and hopefully, knock on wood, nobody gets hurt. Okay, we've already got a Gota who has now a ligament damage on his toe, might need surgery four to six weeks out, gives Guyton more playing time and actually makes us a little short at offensive tackle. We may start looking at players to be filling in the rosters there uh, as well. Now, of course, we lost Sam Williams early in training camp as well, which also makes you wonder if they'll look at bringing in another defensive end and stuff like that. So this is where you start looking at the waving wire and the team will start signing some players left and right. So this is a good thing to get this practice in. Now, here's the thing I find kind of comical. And I'm going to say right now, I've talked to my buddy Greg, of course, a couple times last night. Um, I've talked to uh, Cooper's dad, uh, Cooper BB and things. I saw Cooper carrying everybody's pads and helmets and everything else, still with a big smile on his face. He got a lot of action in the game, and I still have yet to have enough time to go through and look at all the game fills, but seeing some of the highlights from people. You know, he's doing something different. I want you to understand because I remember some someone, a female uh, reporter or somebody who just basically said, you know, hey, you're an offensive lineman. All you got to do is just go hit somebody. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. Being on the offensive line is more difficult than being on the defensive line. There's more things to understand, okay, because the plays are more complex. Defense is more reactionary and stuff. You have your assignments and things. That's not to say that defense isn't complicated, too, because when you start thinking about the X stunts, the Y stunts, and start thinking about the different hand movements, the different things you can try and do to set up a guy, you know, are you going to swim? Are you going to club? Are you going to jab, step, and rip? What are you going to do to try and beat your man? Okay, all right? Be that as it may, as the center, that is the hardest one because you have so many things you have to do before you actually just hit a big guy. You have to be able to hear the cadence or understand it's a silent count. You know, you get slapped on the ass, let you know, hike the football. Is a quarterback's hands in your crotch to take the ball? You got a man closer to you on the field than anyone else anyone else I have my football here the nose guard is only a football length away that's how close it is for the guards they're a good yard apart because the the guards have to be at the belt buckle of the center you are right there with the person head to head right there that's going to be like a raging bull. You got to hold on to this football and look around and see and make the calls for the protections for the every, everybody else. Now I got to listen to the quarterback and snap the football and make sure that it's not over his head. That's a lot to do before the play goes off. If you're the guard, you just listen to what the center tells you on changing the blocking or maybe the tackle and listen to the quarterback and then you go to your assignment. So it's an adjustment. But you saw pieces of work where you say with Cooper Beebe, 
where he ended up snapping the football and he goes over and hits the guard. Now, granted, the guard is not expecting to be hit. I mean, the tackle is not expecting to be hit in the shoulder. He's rushing. He's off balance. It's all balance and leverage. And Cooper BB had the leverage. It knocks the guy right on over. Great looking play. He gives you the, okay, we got a player here. You see Tyler Guyton in pass blocking, literally driving a guy down the line. You see his feet. I'm going to call him Twinkle Toes. I'm going to call him Twinkle Toes because his footwork is so fast and incredible at recovering. He's going to be the starter. And you look at this and say, after having some years where we had Joe Looney, we had um, uh, Jason Peters out there and, and the Gota out there, and we've had so many mismatches. We had problems where we really didn't have a guard. Well, now we got two all-pro guards. We look like we have a guy who could be the future Tyron Smith out there. And you've got a young guy who is fighting with another guy, Brock Hoffman, and could be the guy that if Zach Martin retires, fills in. So you look at this and say the Cowboys have rebuilt their offensive line. Now, granted, they're young. They have have to gel together. There's going to be mistakes by Brock Hoffman, Cooper Beebe, and Tyler Guyton. But you have young guys that are not injured, filled. When you start getting injured, you start continuing to get injured. You don't say, okay, I got the injuries out of the way. I'm going to have a few years now. No, once you start getting injuries, you continue to get them. These guys have no miles on them. And you look at this and say, okay, this could potentially be the best offensive line we've had in a while. And if you're a quarterback, that's what you want. You want a young, dynamic offensive line that can block. And if you're Dak Prescott, you want to look at this and say, money is the key to end of your woes, your ups, your downs, your highs, and your lows. Didn't you tell me that money bought your clothes? It's like that, and that's the way it is, to a point. But we hear, you know, oh, man, Dak Prescott, New York, with Bill Belichick. New York ain't had a good offensive line in forever. You can get killed. Remember when DeMarco Murray went to the Eagles for more money? How'd that work out? Money isn't everything. And if you're a quarterback, you want a good offensive line in front of you. And if the Cowboys ever get off their ass and get the CeeDee Lamb deal done... You look at this and say, okay, here's what I got here. I got a star in my helmet, which means, you know, good or bad, they're always talking about me. And even when they're talking bad about me, I get more endorsements than anybody. I make a whole lot of money there. I got that star. And looking at the track record of guys who've played a while for the Cowboys, it looks like they have a really good after football career because i can look at moose johnson i can look at troy aikman i can look at tony romo you know not so much with jason witten be that as it may there is life for me and if i win a super bowl ooh, ooh, okay after 30 years oh my god they might do like they did for nick Foles and put a statue out there no they won't No, they won't. They won't because Jerry Jones is too cheap. He might put a bobblehead out there, but that's about it. So I've got potentially a great offensive line for the next three, four years. If they sign CeeDee Lamb to a contract, that means I've got one of the top wide receivers out there. And I look and I say, I've got a young stud who I really like in a number two, number three wide receiver in Jalen Tolbert. Huh. And I have an emerging security blanket in Jake Ferguson. The only thing I don't really have right now on this offense is a great young running back stud, although Rico hasn't looked bad. But if the only thing I need to do is reload at running back, 
and I've got a couple of really good wide receivers, and I've got a good offensive line. Because if I got a good offensive line, if I have extra time, everybody gets open at some point. A tight end who's dynamic, who can catch the ball and go down the field, who's developing into a stud, a wide receiver that that that's literally broke records of the Cowboys. Those are things I can work with on an offense. So you look at this and say, wow, the Cowboys actually are, might be better than advertised on the offensive side of the football. Think about it. Think about how bad some of the offensive lines have been for us over the last couple of years. Be that as it may, the thing I find funny for all those out there that are always out there saying, trade Dak, get rid of Dak, let him go, just draft another guy. I want to give you a cautionary tale because even... Six months ago, people were saying the Cowboys should just get rid of Dak and get Justin Fields. And that's the same people that were like, still, you know, uh, you know, Trey, Trey Lance, you know, he's developing. He, he, he could be that guy, those guys. Because I want you to understand what the San Francisco 49ers did. They traded for Jimmy G, right, to make him their quarterback. That didn't really work, although he did get to a Super Bowl, but he had a couple of interceptions in that game. They decided we need to get a primo quarterback, and they gave up three number ones to move up and take a chance on him. Imagine, if you will, C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, and Tyler Smith. That's three of our best players. Three all pros. Let me say that again, people. When you talk about trading up to get a quarterback, three all pros is what we have. We would have spent. To take a chance, to roll the dice, to see if that guy is going to be the guy. I have heard so many players over the years that people said, oh, man, I'll get, get rid of Dak, man. I'll take Justin Fields. He's the flavor of the year. He was. Flavor of the year. Deshaun Watson. Uh, let's see. I remember. Oh, we should trade for Russell Wilson. When Russell Wilson. Two number ones. Okay. Micah and Tyler Guy. I mean, Tyler Smith. Okay, and how's Russell doing right now? Sam Darnold. Oh, my God, Sam Darnold, man. I'll take Sam Darnold over. Oh, man. All these guys, Josh Rosen. We should draft Josh Rosen. Paxton Lynch. Oh, let's get that guy. You look at how many guys out there that can play and do or will be at least a runner-up MVP are few and far between. Let's be real here. Y'all wanted Trey Lance and swore he's better than Dak Prescott. I'm just going to sit here and sip on my coffee. But here, it was just six months ago people were saying, Justin Fields, oh man, we get Justin Fields, man. He's going to be great. Here's where Justin Fields is right now. Because I, I've been waiting to ask you this question the entire weekend with Justin Fields and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Did you actually believe he had a shot to be the starting <laughs> Murray, quarterback another opening one. day for the Pittsburgh Steelers over Russell Wilson? Justin Herbert. Yes. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. And, and I don't think that's all. Yeah, I don't think that's off the board considering the two gaffes with the fumbles that we saw, um, some fumbles. of the negative plays, the sacks. I, I don't think sacks. it's completely off the board. I, I will say he did some good things. I mean, in, in two of the three drives that he led, he got him into plus territory, so that's not nothing. But you can't have those possessions, those drives in because of negative plays, because of mistakes that are avoidable, right? Before you can avoid, you know, before you can win a football game, you have to avoid losing them. And I thought that Justin Fields made some, some being able to get the ball there with some zip. There is no question from a physical tool standpoint that Justin Fields is supposed
Russell Wilson is at in his career. It's just about <laughs> Justin Fields being able to clean up all those other areas as far as the operation is because concerned. Justin Fields had a chance to assess his performance and he <laughs> kept it real, sort of. I think overall, um, I think we ran the ball well, moved the ball well, and I think, you know, just the summary of the game, we were just shooting ourselves in the foot, uh, fumble snaps, I think all three phases, so uh, we can definitely be better in that part, and, um, you know, I think the snapping part, we just got to be on the same page, uh, you know, just so I, I, I would put that on, you know, me to uh, just be on the same page and, you know, know who's in that center, know uh, how to adjust and what I need to do when, you know, next in the game. What I like about Justin Fields, CC, is that, he is always willing to show the blame, even though the first snap was not on him, that missed snap. To me, the center didn't get the ball up to him quick enough and didn't get into the right spot. The second snap, you can say, okay, that was a combination of both, more Justin Fields than that. But because he is always willing to shoulder that burden, that is something you can rally around if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers because you're looking for a guy that's not going to make excuses when things go wrong and not point the finger at others when things go wrong. I still think that this job is going to be Russell Wilson's no matter what he did, unless Justin Fields went out there and got a touch of Ben Roethlisberger for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But something like that, with all that happened on Friday, and he still was able to perform reasonably well, that is something that bodes well for the Steelers' future, no matter what happens by opening day, even though I still believe it's Russell Wilson's job to lose. And Justin Fields has a much bigger rock to try to get that bolt up that hill to try to take the job away from him. Yeah, but Freddie, see how are you gonna get a job to Russell Wilson and he can't stay healthy enough to practice? That was like, like that's the thing that we all. <laughs> yeah, well, well it, it, it sounds like it sounds like you're ready to give. So there you have it. So trust me, it sounds like Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, they're a one year deal. And Cowboys, if you don't want Dak Prescott, I can guarantee you the Steelers would. Especially if they make the move, if it works out with Brandon Ayuk going there, you want if you're gonna pay that much for Brandon Ayuk, <laughs> excuse me, you gonna want to make sure you have somebody who can pull the trigger. That's all I'm saying. There's a lot of guys in the course of the eight years that we've been talking about Dak Prescott that were told to be, were said to be so much better than Dak Prescott. Yet, the highway is literally littered with them, and he's the one still standing. To me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. To me, if I'm Jerry Jones and I've seen what I've seen right now, I look at this and say, you know what? I got a really good team right now. Maybe with San Francisco having a Super Bowl hangover and possibly losing Brandon Ayuk and maybe taking a step back. The Eagles with Kellen Moore. The sophomore slump, so to speak, maybe for the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love because now the book's out on him that maybe they take a step back. I look at this and say, there's a chance. Couple pieces here and there might be the difference but there you go good people as always i appreciate you all here watching the joe boo sports report and i will see you guys real soon um it's going to be another one of those busy days but make sure you check us out uh i should be able to live stream the uh i can't even think who i've never heard of dan salio who the hell is dan salio dan salio and probably Philly 500 that are going to be there talking trash. And I can't wait. I hope Philly 500 is there because he's posting and trying to call me out and talking about Mozzie. I'm going to actually give him a little bit of knowledge about football and understanding defenses. Okay? All right, good people. As always, I appreciate you. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Oh,